But some, some things about, about elliptical orbits or equations of ellipses in general. Now, I must say that I, equations of ellipses are very difficult to understand, okay? That you need to go through a proper course in training to know what all the constants are. And you know, for us to really implement a mathematical treatment, we only need to know some information about ellipses, okay? But I just want to tell you now that we have kind of simplified the equations a bit, okay? Because we are, we are not really using all the properties of ellipses that we should be using, at least not at this level, okay? But never mind, we will just go on with what we know about ellipses actually, okay? So previously we left off. And, appeal, and I uh, excuse my apologies, or please accept my apologies that I have made a mistake in writing the, the equation, the polar equation over here. The one at the top is actually h squared uh, divided by k, which, which is the corrected one, okay? However, this is the equation of, in polar form of the elliptical orbit, okay? It's an elliptical orbit because it takes this form, okay? But what we need to know is that E over here, okay, is called the eccentricity. The eccentricity, okay? It's called the eccentricity over here, the, the term E over here, if the ellipsis takes this form, okay, or if the polar form it comes in this in this form, okay. And the eccentricity describes okay the orbit we go. So we know certainly know there's an elliptical uh, elliptical orbit because the eccentricity is less than one. Sorry, less than one. Yeah, I believe that is correct, okay? Less than one. So however, what we also know is that the eccentricity E, okay, is also equal to C divided by A. Okay, C divided by A is simply the ones that are measured over here, the, the terms that are measured over here. C is the from the center to the mass m, which is the sun, and A is the semi-major axis. Okay? Okay, now what we're gonna do is that we want to really express the in the polar form in the rectangular form. Okay, we want to do that. Okay, so bear in mind that E is equals to C over A. So we are gonna make the conversion from the polar form to the rectangular form. Now the rectangular form I can write it now is x squared take away a plus y squared take away b is equals to, let me just have a quick check, it's equals to one over here like so, okay? Now, improving uh, Kepler's third law, we want to find, the, we want to get the period, okay, of revolution. Now, certainly the period is not here, but we also want the semi-major axis, which is a over here like so, okay? So basically, this is the equation that we have, right? Okay, and we got the polar form over here. So. Now, what I'm going to do now is that I want to find an equation relating E with the variables A and B, okay? If you notice that we've got C over here, but C does not appear in the rectangular form. So basically, we're going to do some algebra to re-express E. And how are we going to do about, go about doing that? Okay, E is equal to C divided by A, right? Okay, now, look, using some Pythagoras, okay, I'll, let me just square both of them first, okay? Uh, what can I say about C squared? Uh, yeah, C, so C squared, is equals to a squared take away b squared, okay? I think that's easy enough to show. So basically, e squared is equals to a squared take away b squared divided by a squared, okay? Yeah, there, so, and now let's just rearrange for b squared, okay? So I bring this one over, okay? b squared is equals to, I bring this over, and then I bring the b squared over, so I've got a squared, uh, wait, wait, so I bring this over, so I minus a squared e squared, okay? Yeah, and then which is equal to bring out the a squared, one take away e squared over here. Okay, there we go. So we have eliminated, we got this equation here, okay, and we have eliminated c, right? Okay, so I'll just write here, b squared is equals to a squared, one take away e squared, okay, and eliminated c. Okay, so now, remember, our goal, our goal, I mean, loosely speaking, is to really find a period, okay, which you might kind of suspect now how we're going to bring the period inside the picture, which we would define as T, okay, the period is T, okay, which is the time it takes for one revolution, and A, which is the seven major axis. We eliminate C, that is good. So now, now, some astronomy, okay, the seven major axis basically is telling us the distance from here to here. Another, another way to describe it is the mean distance, okay? mean distance. Now when I say the mean distance, it's because it is the average of the greatest and the least values of r. Okay, what is r? r is the one over here. So you see, as the planet moves around this elliptical orbit, with m being you know, the one of the focus, but the center is over here, r can sweep the least distance which is over here, and r can at the same time sweep the greatest distance which is over here. Okay, I hope you see that. And the semi-major x is the mean distance, so it's half divided by the sum of the greatest and the least values of r. Now, looking from the diagram, we define theta as, as here, right? So this occurs when theta is equal to zero and when theta equals to pi. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, basically, yeah, we just put theta inside there. So now, having said that, I can re-express the mean distance or the semi-major axis. 
So A is equal to half. Now, how do I get the value of R? I will just simply use the polar form, which is the one over here, and substitute the values of theta inside, okay? So I've got H squared divided by K. Now, the first one is 1 plus cosine 0, okay? The least distance here is equal to 1, so it's basically E over here, okay? Then I will plus with H squared divided by K, divided by 1 take away E. Close bracket. Why one take away e? Because cosine pi is minus one. So um, yeah, minus e. And then after this, I will now okay put it under a common denominator. Okay, some algebra coming up. Okay, and I will just basically times cross multiply. But at the same time, I will bring the h squared divided by k out. Okay, so open a big bracket. Okay, one take away e. Close bracket. And this all will go over the other side. So it's plus one plus e close bracket over here okay i hope that i hope you can see that okay i'll just basically putting it under a common denominator and cross multiply okay so i will bring the h squared divided by k out divided by two okay times the denominator one okay this looks quite neat because i get a minus e squared right yeah i get a minus e squared and now here at the top i got a one plus one so i got a two over here minus e plus e so basically i just simply get a two and then i can do some rearranging and I get this one over here, 1 take away e squared. Okay, so a is equal to that. Is that fine? Yup. However, using this equation over here, I can re-express the e squared, right? So rearranging this one over here, okay, 1 take away e squared is equals to, from this equation over here, b squared take away a squared, right? Is that correct? b squared take away a squared, correct. And so a is now equals to Okay, bring that over, I will get h squared divided by k, and this one would be inverse, so I'll get a squared at the top, b squared at the bottom, and now doing some rearranging, okay, I will just simply divide this by 2, let's just bring the h squared, okay, so h squared is equals to k, bring the k over here, bring the b squared over here, okay, and bring the k down, a, so I get an a over here, there we go, okay just some algebra to find yet another equation, okay? Using the knowledge of the mean distance, b squared take away a. Now, the reason why I'm doing all this, you might be thinking, why, why am I finding all these small little equations? Well, basically, remember that for Kepler's third law, it's basically period proportional to a. Well, period squared proportional to semi major to squared. So the reason why I'm doing all this is because obviously, there's going to be a constant here, okay, which I need to kind of, you know, extract to show that they are proportional. And that's why I'm showing all these constants here. Now, h is a constant, k is a constant, and yeah, these are also a constant. So basically, a is the only one that changes, okay? Yeah, A is the only one that changes like so. Okay, now lastly, how are we going to show, how are we going to bring the period in the time element? Well, let's recall Kepler's second law, okay? And that is the area swept out, okay, at equal time intervals are equal, or mathematically speaking, it's like that. T2 take away A, T1 is equals to half H, T2 take away T1, okay? Now, if we set T1 as 0, so it's our starting point, T1 is equal to 0, the period, okay, which is T2 in this case, would be simply T. Does that make sense? So I start from here, T1 is over here, I go one whole round, okay, and our T2 is back over here. So basically, the time of T2 is T, the period, right? So this one is simply equal to half T, okay, and this one over here, what is it? It's the area of the whole ellipsis. And another knowledge of, of ellipses that ellipses, sorry, that you need to know is that the area is equal to pi a b. Okay, now you see all these results, you know, if I had the time or if I know, I would really like to show them, but these are just the results that we use, okay? Um, a b, which is a over here, okay, a is over here, b is over here. This defines the area, okay, as we go all the way around here like this, okay? A is equals a b. Okay, so lastly, we got a t squared over there, so let's just rearrange, we got Sorry, half, that's a half here. My apologies. Okay, I'll just rearrange t is equals to 2 pi ab divided by h, right? Now, I suspect a t squared is coming up, so I'm just going to square this, and I'm just going to square everything, which is 4 pi squared a squared b squared, okay, divided by h squared. Okay, now, what was the equation that we had just now? Well, let's just use the one over here, okay, so I can rearrange and write... This one can be rearranged to write b squared divided by h squared equals to a divided by k, correct? Bring this under a divided by k, and now I can now substitute this inside here, 
okay, and this will give me 4 pi squared, okay, a cube divided by k, okay, because the a cube, sorry, the a times here times by the a squared, I get a cube, and I can just simply write it in this form, 4 pi squared divided by k, a cube, okay, and thus, finally, t squared is proportional to a cubed because 4 pi squared divided by k is a constant k plus third law okay that the square of the period is proportional to a cube of the uh, semi major axis